Okay, just like we practiced. A one and a two and a skiddly diddly do. <laughs> Hey guys! Ah, Pat. How long have you been in the kitchen? Hours. I installed a new fridge, but anyway, I just saw First Man the other day, and I gotta say, I'm so glad we finally got a new installment in the USS PCU. The what? Well, you know, the US Space Program Cinematic Universe. <laughs> Come on, that's not- I've never heard of that. That's not- Matt, let me explain. Pretend you don't know anything about world history, and all you have are movies. Then, take a step back, and look at the whole span of Western cinema. You'll see that there are certain clusters of films that fit together, with the same time period and setting, featuring recurring characters and overlapping stories. Basically, it's what we now think of as a cinematic universe. But these weren't intended as cinematic universes. They're standalone films, sometimes made decades apart, that accidentally connect to form a tapestry of stories, with a larger, overarching narrative. And right now, you might be side-eyeing me and saying, yeah, no shit, there are a bunch of movies based on historical events, but just stick with me here. Maybe the best example of this are the films about the US space program, or the USS PCU, as I'm choosing to call it here. The core films are The Right Stuff, Apollo 13, Hidden Figures, and First Man. They were all made separately by different filmmakers with different casts, not intended to have any connection, but if you arrange them chronologically, you'll see several narrative threads flow through all of them. For example, The Right Stuff introduces Gus Grissom. We see him recruited by NASA and become one of the Mercury astronauts. We see his first space flight. Then, in First Man, we see his death. That death then becomes the basis for a key conversation in Apollo 13 between Jim Lovell and his son. Deke Slayton is another astronaut recruited in The Right Stuff, and he becomes an executive who oversees the program in First Man and Apollo 13. Deke is one of the original Mercury 7 astronauts, ladies and gentlemen, and now he's our boss. Hidden Figures exists within the larger narrative of The Right Stuff, telling a side story connected to the launch of Mercury 7, as several characters like John Glenn, Gordon Cooper, Wally Shera, and Alan Shepard make appearances. Jim Lovell is introduced as a minor character in First Man, then becomes the lead in Apollo 13, in which Neil Armstrong, the central figure of First Man, makes a brief one-scene cameo. It's almost like the Chronicles of Narnia, or Discworld, or Earthsea, or Tamara Pierce's Tortal books, in which the protagonists change in different installments, with some shifting into supporting roles as minor characters move up to take center stage. Or, in more relevant film terms, it's kinda like the MCU, and the TV show From the Earth to the Moon is its agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., or it's what Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. should be, being the connective tissue that fills in the gaps between the major installments. Man, that's a good one. You know what another one of my favorites is? The BDWW2CU. What the f*** are you talking about? The Britain during World War II cinematic universe, obviously. Yeah. How are you both so on the same page? Matt. I first started thinking about this idea of accidental historical cinematic universes last year, with the releases of Dunkirk and Darkest Hour. These were two movies made as totally standalone works, released just months apart, that served as perfect companion pieces. Darkest Hour is about Winston Churchill becoming Prime Minister of Great Britain and being faced with the dilemma of how to evacuate the British troops from Dunkirk. The film Dunkirk is set at the same time, just across the English Channel, about the soldiers trying to survive the evacuation. Dunkirk ends with the young soldiers arriving home and reading in a newspaper the same speech we see Churchill deliver at the end of Darkest Hour. We shall defend our island whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender! It's two distinct perspectives on the same story. But I had another thought while watching Darkest Hour. It's when King George VI is introduced, and I realized that this was set the year after the film The King's Speech, which is all about George. While again, these aren't intended to be a part of any series or franchise, The King's Speech works as a sort of origin story. It deepens the impact of this supporting character since we've already spent two hours with a story all about him. So Matt, you understand now? Yeah, I think I'm starting to get the hang of it. Uh-huh. So how about the WPN ACU? Of course, the Washington Post-Nixon Administration Cinematic Universe. A classic. This one feels a bit more intentional. 
The Post, Steven Spielberg's 2017 drama about the Washington Post's publication of the Pentagon Papers, has the Nixon administration as a distant, looming antagonist. We see glimpses of Nixon's shadow through the window of the Oval Office. The final scene of the movie feels almost like a post credit scene from a Marvel movie. It gives a glimpse of the Watergate break-in, making The Post almost an intentional prequel to All the President's Men. Several characters even carry over into that movie, like executive editor Ben Bradley. This is the rare case of one of these films acknowledging and even using our prior knowledge of a previous film. Spielberg knows we've seen All the President's Men, and that we know how that story plays out, so setting it up at the end signals to us that the conflict from this film will continue and pay off in the next one, even if the next one was actually made 40 years earlier. Okay, now let's get into some... History is all one big story, made up of an infinite number of smaller stories, which is the same general principle of a shared universe. And looking at these accidental cinematic universes, what becomes apparent is that there are particular moments throughout history that are like narrative vortexes, moments that were so significant that countless fascinating stories spun out of them, and then countless writers and filmmakers were compelled to tell those stories. But this whole weird idea of looking at these movies this way makes me wonder about the extent to which the Marvel Cinematic Universe and its imitators have changed the way we look at movies. We've spent the past decade being trained to see connective narrative threads between films that are not necessarily sequels to one another. And the last takeaway I get from this is that these accidental cinematic universes, whether about the US space program or Britain during World War II or whatever, could actually demonstrate a better way to make a cinematic universe. These movies do tell an overarching story, since obviously they all have the same source material, the actual events that occurred and the real people that lived them. But each movie feels totally unique. The mythic, sprawling narrative of The Right Stuff feels nothing like the straightforward drama of Apollo 13, which feels nothing like the intense, subjective character study of First Man. And yet, they are all a part of the same world. As successful and popular as the MCU is, a common criticism of it is that there's too much homogeneity in the style and tone of the films. They all look and feel kind of the same. But why couldn't there be an Eternals film, like The Right Stuff, or a small adjacent story focused on supporting characters like Pepper Potts, similar to Hidden Figures, or a Daredevil film with the approach of First Man? These accidental cinematic universes might, also by accident, be a model for how to make a better cinematic universe. Wow, these are great. Yeah. Hey guys. <sighs> Rachel, how long have you been sitting there? Hours, what are you guys talking about? Oh, you know, we're just <laughs> jamming on some sweet CUs. Oh, so you talked about the best one, right? Ah, the USS PCU. No. Is it the BDWW2CU? No. The WPNACU. Guys, guys, I'm talking about the MSATBCU. Oh, the Michael Sheen as Tony Blair Cinematic Universe. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> It's Thanksgiving, which means the holiday season is coming, which means you've got to start thinking of what gifts to get people. Well, here's some advice. Get yourself, or, I don't know, your family, the gift of an Audible membership. Audible has an unbeatable selection of audiobooks, and with this special offer, you can get one audiobook per month, plus two Audible originals. You can listen on any device, anywhere you go. That means on your trip home to visit your family, and then at your home instead of talking to your family. Patrick, can you help with the cooking? Mom, no, I'm busy listening to the audiobook of The Right Stuff with my new Audible membership. <sighs> anyway, if you sign up now, you can get three months of Audible for just $6.95 per month, more than half off the usual price. Just go to audible.com slash Patrick Willems or text Patrick Willems to 500-500. If you enjoyed this video and all the talk about the USS PCU, you should check out the audiobook of The Right Stuff by Tom Wolfe, which I'm listening to right now. Again, go to audible.com slash Patrick Willems or text Patrick Willems to 500-500. It's a great gift for yourself or other people if you want. <laughs>